with a piece like this, you've always got this, this very hard uh, horizontal, and the first problem that you have is trying to break that horizontal. Um, I'll work 90% from memory and 10% from photography, 5% from photography, 5% from sketches. So I've done a quick sketch here of what I plan uh, to achieve today. I just, this is my medium I'm going to use today, and I've got it in my old airbrush thing. It means that you can squirt it straight on the palette. Uh, this uh, impasto medium is like a paint and butter, and you, you add it to your paint just to, uh, to supple it up. Uh, the medium actually, uh, sometimes I like liquid. Uh, uh, it's a mixture of pure gum turpentine and quick drying medium. Okay, my sketch here. The purpose is going to be that I start off with the yellows. I'm going to work quite transparent with the yellow and put down that first, uh, and I'll get my yellows down. Then I'm going to work with the darker uh, purples, purple being the opposite of yellow. Uh, I'm going to play on that first of all, and I'm going to judge. Uh, what impact that has. So uh, the technique that I'm going to use for this is using a rag to paint out the light. And I'm going to paint the yellow first, I'm going to paint the purple over the top, and then I'm going to bring the purple back with a rag. Now the reason I put the, the yellow down first is so that I get the yellow affecting the purple when the rag is used to, to take away. This is a transparent yellow, it's not cadmium, it's not a uh, Thick yellow. Now this is a pre-stretched canvas. I've got a video online if anyone wants to see a paint from start to finish in 10 minutes, which is not going to happen today. Uh, <laughs> you, can, you can see it online um, and uh, you see it being painted from start to finish. I always, I've also done videos to uh, show you how to stretch a canvas, show you how to prepare a canvas and uh, show you a technique called glazing, which I'm going to be going into a little bit in a second. But, um, and they're online on YouTube, you just uh, search Scott Mason on Google and then hit the video, you're good. But the, the important thing is that your colours will bleed from one thing to another. Uh, and you'll lose those edges. <coughs> Okay, I want to get redder uh, 
towards the middle of the world. This is nothing new. So I'm just going to add a little bit of this. No, just another phase. Find it. What I really need is what makes me bleed. We're like a new disease. Lord, she's still too young. If anyone's if any ever frightened about starting a painting, uh, it's a terrible shame because it's the most exciting part. Uh, you just need to get the colour down. Uh, you, it's the quickest time. It's the, it's the time where you're having a bit of fun and you're not getting too bogged down with anything. Um, if it helps, just get just cover the entire canvas. When I'm working on a seascape, the whole canvas will be going at the same time. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm not worried about any detail that starts, I'm not worried about making a mess of something that I spent three hours on. I just get little hand towels from Tesco. <laughs> so I'm just bringing back some of that colour, and what you notice is you, you don't actually get to the full white of the canvas. You will still remain with a little bit of that initial colour that you put on. But you'll get a great colour of yellow just in the transition of the clouds. So I would like to just paint in the, uh, the negative space. So rather than think about the sky as a, a background blue with colours, with clouds put on top, you're thinking about painting the clouds first and then painting the sky around about. And it's a great way to paint, and it's a great way to paint anything from still life to, to figurative to anything. You keep the background going at the same time as the positive space. Everything is made up of positive and negative space. If I'm painting my hand next to that white background, I'm not just going to take a white sheet of paper and draw a hand on it. I'm going to take a grey sheet of paper and draw the white space, and then I'll draw a little bit of the hand space. And then in the process of keeping the background and the foreground going at once, you start to mix the colours in, in between with each other. You start to pick up a little positive shape with a negative shape, and then that softens your edges a little bit. So what I'm achieving here is everything's got soft edges just now. I will harden the edges later on if I need to. I've also got focal references of how some clouds will be lit up. Uh, so you have your dark areas of the cloud and the, the lowering sun at the time will, will cast shadow on some of the clouds by lighting up others. So actual clouds will make shadows on other clouds so the details come later on. Uh, I like to paint and, uh, and imagine my cloudscape as a very sort of wide area of view so that you get uh, a lot of perspective and a lot of depth. Uh, so what I'm looking to do is start to make a lot more vertical strokes, which is going to describe the, the cloudscape passing by your head here. So I know that my... Uh, a highlight is going to land somewhere around around here on the, uh, the water <coughs> from the source. start to make lighter marks, not as light as my main light source, I'm going to start to make lighter marks and have the cloud disappear off the side of the, the, the page. Tries to fight through the cloud. This is going to be what I'm trying to achieve here. So 
I'm going to take a, a little bit of the uh, orange and I'm going to warm up uh, with an orange. Okay, at this stage I'm only just setting the uh, setting the color family almost, you know, I'm just getting an idea of how the color is going to go. Um, and just just with a gestural stroke like that, it's, uh, it's getting the paint onto the canvas and then I'll refine it in stitch. A common mistake with a lot of people that, uh, that uh, a lot of amateur artists that, that come to a painting of the impression that um, when you look at someone else's painting, that colour of red that they've used in the corner is the first colour that was put on that canvas right there. And it, uh, a painting is a series of layers. If you've got something of an interesting personality, they've got a multi layered personality, you want to give your painting many layers. You want to see beyond, you want to have someone look at your painting and say, how did you do that? Because if everything in your painting is just the colour on the canvas, if you saw a cross section of your painting, and every bit of that painting was just the white of the gesso behind and the colour that you see at the front, it's going to look flat, it's going to look uninteresting. I do like the colour of red and including red in my paintings. Red has almost no place in landscape painting, but it has a place in what I want to put on a canvas. And that's where landscape painting and painting need to compromise with each other. And I'm using a very light touch so that um, it just uh, scrub. I can I can scrape it clean and then pass this knife over the surface very softly to, and make. I'm going to make the textures that the palette knife wants to make. I don't watch. Everything's going to end up in the right hand side of my position. You know and. Uh, you need to stop yourself every time. That's why you need to stand back so much when you're, when you're working on it. Every moment, every day is up here, you stand back and go, oh, that was really good. I go, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you know,